how did Radar One start? It, it actually started at this meeting years ago. Lots of things started here. An argument between Bob Donahue, uh, me, and Lenny Gamella on a panel. And uh, what, what we were seeing is, is that, that men diagnosed with Gleason 6 undergoing radical prostatectomy uh, were getting uh, a bone scan and a CT scan. And they're negative, they're negative, they're negative, and then they're positive, and then you go chasing something, a fractured rib or a bone or osteoarthritis, and biopsy it or whatever, and you find they're negative. And we all learned that. But then Donahue said, everybody at the VA gets this. Uh, and the residents will attest to that that are in the audience. Dr. Murray is laughing and so forth. So the, it, it did happen. And then Gamella, I mean, he knew better, but he said that the lawyers in Philadelphia uh, really uh, uh, was, was an issue. And you had to order because if you didn't, and somebody had a problem in that. And I said, well, wait a minute. So we said, we ought to do something about it. And we talked to uh, some folks to get some funding. We did. We sat down as a group. And this is a group that's there that sat down. And some of them are here right now, uh, Neil Stone, uh, Phil Koo, and uh, Tom Keen, and Dan Petrulak. And you'll see these names throughout the radar thing. And what, so what, what we said is, we looked at it, and we'll go through it, what we did is we looked at a lot of data systematically and came up with, you know, in spite of all these, these groups out here that make resin, uh, recommendations, there, there really weren't any uh, significant statements and agreements and things like that. And so what we did is a, sort of a Delphi type thing, literature search and everything, and we, we set, came up with this, and we published it, and I showed that in the last page in Urology. I think it was in about 2013. And we concluded a lot of things, uh, that there was a lot of inconsistencies in the literature and so forth, uh, and uh, there also was an underdiagnosis of metastatic disease, how that was used. The consensus was uh, that we, we needed to do more imaging in some areas, less in others, and we needed a lot of progress. And, uh, but the important thing, and this has lived through all the radar things, is the early detection of metastases in prostate cancers, we say here, is important. So these are, these are the three buckets we came up with. And I can't tell you how many times I go to urologist offices or things like that, or uh, meetings, and these buckets are still shown. It's one of the most downloaded articles uh, in prostate cancer still. And we came up with the newly diagnosed thing that, hey, we don't need to do bone scans unless you have two of the three things, Gleason score greater than seven, uh, uh, PSA level greater than 10, or a nodule. And that cut down uh, probably about 80-some percent of the, of the scans that were done. And just think of the amount of money that was saved. And now we had something that the, the, the lawyers could look at and say, hey, these guidelines said this. Biochemical failure. This is another area where we wasted money. You can scan and scan and scan men who have biochemical failure after radiation or surgery and find uh, when their PSAs are less than five or so forth, you don't find anything. And so then we said, OK, do your first scan between five and 10. If that's negative, wait till, till 20 or a doubling time of the PSA. And then M0, castrate-resistant patients. So there was not a lot going on here at that time. And these were patients who failed uh, hormone therapy. And again, they were getting scanned and scanned and scanned. Their, their threshold for doing a biopsy was a little less. It was a, a greater than two, we said, and then repeat when it's in five and so forth. And that was the genesis of a lot of clinical trials that were done back there, back uh, then with this. So radar two, what we do with the radar things, we said, okay, we, we, we throw something out. Well, how does it apply to medicine? How does it apply? And our first one, our, our radar two, and again, you can see the same sort of people involved here, uh, Dan Petrolak and uh, Nick Fogelsang, who I showed you the picture of earlier, who died September 30th, Tom Keen, uh, 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 Phil Koo again, uh, and Bertrand Tumbal, we got the Europeans involved and, and so forth and so on. And what this was basically 
was something called therapeutic layering. We, we coined that term, and it, and it dealt with, and it's sort of in prostate cancer, what we were doing is treatment A followed by treatment B followed by treatment D. We said you needed to do a foundation and build on it, and that's uh, what happened. And so the foundation here is uh, androgen deprivation therapy and so forth. And then uh, we thought, okay, so we add things to it, second generation anti-androgen, throw in immunotherapy, uh, uh, targeted alpha therapy, radium, uh, chemotherapy, and so forth. But you know, maintain a support, you, you layer these things, they overlap, you don't go A, B, C, and D. And as you think of most cancers that we cure, it's not A, B, C, and D, it's, it's uh, doublets and triplets, which are a little bit different, but this is layering and continuing. So we, radar three, we had a little hiatus for a while, and then along came what we just heard about, the PET scanning. And the, the ones that were available basically were flucyclovine scans, uh, and then at certain institutions like Mayo and places like that, scan, uh, the, the uh, other scans that, that were out there, but these were not the PSMA. And so here's our original radar, here's our add-on. What did we add on? What we added on, now that we had something, and we called this next generation imaging, NGI then, um, if you have somebody that has a newly diagnosed disease, and this was something that we sort of came up with, is, is that you, conventional imaging is equivocal, and, uh, so when do you do it? Maybe you'll do it when somebody was PSA was 30 and they had a Gleason 7 and nothing was found, or an 8. Well, that would be a place to do the next generation imaging, which are those things. And then we, biochemical failure, well, now we got a new t uh, tool in our uh, tool chest, and that was we could consider using some of these new scans with PSAs above 0.5, M0 and M1, some minor changes that occurred. And then the other thing is radar four was an implementation thing. We came up with this term transitional cell disease, not transitional, transitional disease. And you know, there was a little pathway, rising PSA, uh, then, uh, and then fa biochemical failure, hormone therapy, and metastatic castrate resistant, and all this. But we, we felt that, that metastatic castrate sensitive and then MCRPC we're pretty much in, in the same pathway, and the whole goal here was to stop this, this uh, pathway uh, and progression to metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer. So radar five, again, was uh, an implementation thing, and it was about evolving the understanding and char characterization of prostate cancer, preventing progression, and that's what it was all about. It was, hey, hey, look at, we ought to hit things hard, we said this the other day um, in this meeting, your first shot at treatment is your best shot. Hit it with your best shot. And it's, it, it isn't, and we've heard this arguments over the 33 years of this meeting about the, the, the concept of, well, let's just wait until that fails. We want to keep another arrow in our quiver, and we don't want to shoot that uh, right now. Well, you, the, the bottom line is, a lot of times you're best off to hit it with the be your best shot. Radar 6, uh, 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 that was just mentioned a couple of minutes ago by Phil, and uh, that came out uh, very quickly uh, thanks to this new journal, Journal Urology Open Plus. We sent that in there, uh, John and his crew, uh, looked at it, and uh, they sent us back a lot of good recommendations, as they did for Radar 7, I'll show you in a minute. And this thing is out right now, and Radar 7 should be out uh, the end of this week, I believe. And so what Radar 6 did was add on, and now we call it MTI, Molecular Targeted Imaging, not TPI, on newly diagnosed patients, and that's where we see some of the a lot of the activity, we've seen this stuff with the, the studies that have been done with Plarify in this uh, area um, and the approval and ordering the test on men who, who are, you think, are at risk. We also had uh, uh, the concept of adding Polaris oncotype and, and things and genomically uh, 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 test uh, 
that we talked about earlier in this meeting, uh, germline and, uh, and um, uh, acquired mutations. Biochemical failure, big area right here um, for utilizing that and so forth. So radar uh, and NMCRPC, that, you know, I can't read, read through all these in the time allotted, but there are a lot of little changes but nothing really major here, but if we start scanning people with NMCRPCs, we're, we're probably going to eliminate that disease state. And then the argument comes up, and that was covered in Radar 7, I'll show you in a minute. M1, sort of the same thing. Uh, this, is, this is one of the things that is a real challenge, is the imaging discordance. And we heard that just mentioned a couple of minutes ago between something that's there and really isn't there. Radar 7 uh, will be out, as I said, this week, and it's got our, our same crew in there. We met, uh, um, it was in uh, November, and the group got together, did all the analysis, uh, came up with, uh, with the uh, how do you implement Radar uh, 6. And there have been many other articles published in the Journal of Neurology where people have said that, but we feel that this, this is sort of a, uh, the, the, the way to go, and now we call it molecular targeted imaging, and we'll have more on that. But basically, what we are is pretty conservative, conservative about this, whether you, know, you think there's some uh, the discordance between uh, you know, a class, a normal imaging and this, or uh, also when you, get the, when you get the scans back and they may be equivocal, something unifocal, oligometastatic, lots of little things here. The bottom line is, is that we need to look at these people very carefully and not jump and consider biopsies and other things to uh, prove that that's what you're dealing with. And that we learned a lot of that stuff from the, um, from the Polarify studies, uh, Condor and Osprey, about the ascertaining what was uh, there. So, the algorithm also changed uh, for biochemical failure, again, uh, uh, looking at that.